Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is the latest in our How to Start Collecting series and today we're going to be looking at those stalwart allies of Napoleon, the Italians. Now this is going to be for the large part using figures that are the same as French troops. Now that's because they're more readily available in plastic. There's also a really good deal and it's also I wanted to use this video to let people know that there's a new deal out there that I think is a very good one for your money. So I just wanted to put it out there and we'll do it for the Italians. Now, as I've hinted at, for the vast majority of the case, the uniform is exactly the same. We're going to look at a unit that's slightly different as well. But by and large, the units are the same. Now, it's been a while since we did one of these videos, so I'm just going to quickly go over the rules again. So we have £200 to make our army. We're going to divide those into two £100 chunks as if it comes out of two different pay packets or something like that and we're going to look at month one the first hundred pounds we're going to look at getting the core of the army and then in the second hundred we're going to look at adding some more flavorful units and and really just rounding out the army into one that we can use in black powder that's another key is i'm trying to f make an army that you can throw down on the tabletop you know if someone says I've got my British, you fancy a game, or I've got my Russians, or whatever. You can just throw these guys down, and you can have a reasonably balanced game that's going to give you the the feel of a Napoleonic war game. So to that end, we're going to look at getting infantry, cavalry, and artillery in there. Then we'll get all those bases covered. Speaking of bases, some of the figures will contain bases, some of them won't. Any bases that I buy, I'm always going to recommend that we go to war bases. They sell them in MDF. They're very, very good. And they're also quite good for the community as well. They were doing a thing over lockdown where it was, if you if you needed, I think it was something like a, up to a dozen bases to finish off a project, then just email them and they sent you the bases out for free. So great guys, war bases. That's where I'm going to be recommending that we go to buy any of our bases from. I also want to talk about unit sizes. We'll be using 24 figures for an infantry battalion and we'll be using 8 for a cavalry regiment. Batteries of guns can be one model, although we'd prefer it to be two. But when we're first getting started, we'll have it as one model, and then we can always add an extra one a bit later on. Or if you just want to stick with the one model batteries, you've got two batteries then. All the prices I give will be recommended retail prices. Now, these will be available cheaper elsewhere, particularly the plastics, because there's a lot of third-party sellers out there. And you can usually get them for 10, 15, 20% off. So I'm going to be giving the RRP. If I've found somewhere that you can get this cheaper though, I'll definitely let you know. What I won't be including are two things. The first one is postage and packaging. And that's because, you know, you may have this as part of a larger order. So you get free postage. Or you may be able to get it from a third party seller. And their postage rates will vary. And it obviously it also depends on where you are in the world as well. That's the the price for the postage is going to be slightly offset by by potentially buying things from a third party seller anyway. The other thing I won't be including are uh, tools, paints, glues, clippers, things like that, because I'm assuming that you know people, most people, when they come to Napoleonics, they either come back into the hobby or they're coming from a different aspect of the hobby. Perhaps they play 40k or. They might play bolt action, something like that. So they've probably already got those to hand. If you'd like to see a video on you know, what basic tools would I recommend for getting started in Napoleonics, let me know. Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily just going to be Napoleonics, to be honest. It'll be getting started in wargaming in general. But if that's a video that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. So with all those rules and stipulations out of the way, let's actually get into the meat of the matter and let's get on with the video now i've done this one slightly differently what i've done before i um selected what units we were going to buy is i've written a quick army list now this is out of the clash of eagles supplement or also something that i'm not including in the final price as well but i would highly recommend buying and what i've looked for in there is i've looked at the italian list because that's who we're going for today and i've seen that we we want to start off really with a couple of Italian units. Now a regiment in there, sorry, a brigade in there consists of two regiments, each regiment between one and four battalions. So I'm going to suggest that we jump straight in with to the Perrys 
and we go for D49. That's the, and this is a big breath here, D49, Imperial French Brigade Deal, 1807 to 1814. Now that will give us four plastic, what I call mid-war sets, one pack of mounted colonels, and a pack of foot artillery. This would normally be £98.50, but in the deal, it comes to £85. So we've got £100 for our first month. We're going to spend £85 of those pounds. We've got ourselves four boxes of infantry, one lot of colonels, and a pack of foot artillery. So I think that's a good start. Now, as I've said a couple of times now, these are French infantry, but they are exactly the same uniforms as the French. In fact, inside the boxes, in the painting guide, it actually gives you both some examples of painting Italian infantry, and you also get some Italian flags in the box as well. So even the Perrys have seen this set, and they've designed it to be used as Italians, as well as French. You can also use them as Swiss, but that's a that's a, a video for a later time. I've been using them for my Vistula Legion. They're a little bit different to the Vistula Legion, and historically accuracy has taken a little bit of a hit there, but they're near enough for my purposes. So you get the four boxes of mid-war infantry. So that gives us 176 figures. Now, they are done in units of 36 in the box. Now, we're only using units of 24. So that's going to give us some leftover. We're going to be able to get some extra commands. We're going to be able to fill those out into extra battalions. Now, I said we've got 176 figures, and we do. However, they're not all of the same type. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got in the box, you've got a, a normal dude, and he can either be marching with the musket resting against his shoulder, or he can be advancing with it out in front. That's the majority of the boxes. But there's also two sprues in there, which are a total of eight figures. So we're going to be looking at uh, 64 figures here that are skirmishing. So we're not going to be able to use those in our main battalions. But don't worry about that. I've got a plan coming up. So if we take off those 32 figures, we're left with 144, he said. Yes, 144 figures left. Now that's great. Now we're going to use, as we said, battalions of 24. So that gives us enough for six battalions of troops. But for two of those battalions, we've not got any command. Don't worry about that, because we've got £15 left over, so we'll be able to grab some extra command for those guys. Don't, like, throw the, uh, the skirmishing figures away, though. We'll put those to one side, we'll come back to those in a bit. Now, we've also got three mounted colonels as well. So, I've se what I've seen a lot of people do, and it's something that I haven't done, mainly because I hadn't thought about it. If I'd thought about it previously, or I'd heard about this, it is exactly what I would have done, and that is they give their first battalion a mounted colonel. So everyone has a leader on foot, he's a guy waving a sword, but the first battalion gets a guy on a horse. Now we've got three of them, and we've got six infantry battalions. So my recommendation, if you want to go down this route, would be to have two regiments of three battalions each, and then you've got a spare colonel left over. One of the colonels, he's the guy on the right-hand side, as the Perry's put the picture up. I'll try and get them up on the on the screen now. He's painted in red, he's painted as a Swiss. But uh, I would keep him separately, use the other two, put those in with the infantry. And the guy with his hat, he's sort of like waving it down a little bit. He can be your brigade commander. So he needs to go on a separate base, and he can be your brigade commander. Now in the Perry boxes, they do come with bases. They also come with flags as well, so that's great. That's something that we don't need to buy. What we are going to need to buy bases for, though, are the artillery and the commanders. So, as I said at the start, we'll jump over to war bases, and we'll grab some of their artillery bases. Now, I've recently... Well, not, not, so, not so recently these days, but I've started the process of rebasing all my artillery, and I use bases that are 100 mil deep, so 10 centimetres deep, around about 4 inches, and 75 millimeters wide, around about three inches. So that gives me quite a large base, and I can get the artillery around there. They come in a pack of, I believe it's four, so that's £1.75. And we're also going to need some round bases for our commanders. So we'll grab a pack of 60 mil round bases, and we've spent £3.50 for those bad boys. So we're now up to uh, £88.50. So we've got just over a tenner left. 
Now, I said earlier on that we don't have command for two of those battalions. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump onto the Perry website. I'm going to pick up two of their single command frames. Now, it's a little bit weird to find, but if you go where it says, I think it's plastic sets or plastic, well, plastic range, isn't it? And then you click on accessories, then the individual sprues come up. Now, it's on page three of these. You have Napoleonic French Infantry Command 1807 to 1814. The code for that is B72. And you get six figures there. So you get two Eagle Guards, a Sapper, an Officer, a Drummer, and an Eagle Bearer. And that's six pounds. So we're going to grab two of those as well. So from the Perrys, we want the Army Deal plus two extra French Infantry Commands. And then we want to get some bases from War Bases. So that gives us another 12 figures. So we're now up to six and a half battalions because obviously they're going to replace some of those spare figures that we had lying around. So we want to keep those guys and we'll look at using those next month. I should also say for the single sprues, that War Games Emporium, they sell them individually. That's another shop we've got here in Sheffield. But I'm not entirely sure how much they are. I think they're about a fiver. So, you know, it, it saves you a pound, I guess, on each one. But um, you can just get it all from the Perrys, I guess, as well. So that extra 12 quid has actually taken us slightly over budget. We were on uh, £88.50, so now we're on £100.50p, which is not bad. I mean, we're only 50p over our budget. And what have we got for that £100.50p? Well, we've got a brigade commander. We've got six battalions of infantry plus a load of spares. We'll get to those in a bit. And we've got a cannon as well. All of these have got bases and they've all got command. Now I say we've got six battalions of infantry. We've actually got a lot more than that. And that's because we bought the extra two commands. So we've got the 12 there. And then we've got the skirmishing troops as well. The elite company troops that come in a separate frame. We've got 32 of those. We're going to further split those down into half, into two lots of 16. Now the reason for that is... There's, there's four of the Elite Company models per sprue. Two of them are running forward. Two of them are standing to be firing or loading, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate those out. And we're going to get two more battalions out of those as well. Now, we've only got 16, so we need to make the numbers up. And we're going to do that next month. But one of the things that we are going to do is those 12 figures that we uh, took out of the battalions by buying the extra command, we're going to use some of those. Now, on the command sprues... You get things like NCOs with the little flags in their muskets, so they mark the end of the line. You get uh, other NCOs, muskets holding the weapon by the lock, things like that. So you, we can use those to add a bit of extra models to our elite companies as well. So, if, you know, we can get up to round about 18 models. You need to use two for each battalion. So you can have a guy who's like marching forward with the unit marker in place. Maybe another was an NCO or you know something like that. Now, what we are doing with these, though, is we are taking away having any skirmish figures. So if you do want to use the skirmish figures, then you want to ignore this, this bit. Just stick with the six battalions and have the skirmish figures to go with them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think that's, that's going to be what a lot of people do, and I would recommend it. But if we're wanting to get the absolute most for our money, then we can take those figures to one side and we can look next in the second month at making an extra unit with those guys. So we've got a bit of unfinished business from month one and we want to get rid of that first. We want to start with a clean slate, a box of the Perry's Elite Company for 1807 to 1814. Now, normally in the boxes, you get eight sprues of line and two sprues of flank companies. Well, this is the other way around. You get eight sprues of flank company and two sprues of just basic line. So that's perfect because what we can do with those is, again, we can divide them amongst our two pseudo battalions that we've got. We've got our running forward guys. We've got our standing and shooting guys. So from the eight sprues, we get another 16 of each pose and we get another command as well. So we've got 32 skirmishes. We've got 32 standing and firers. So that's more than enough for our battalion. 
So that's great. That's cost us £20 if we go to the Perrys. Obviously, they are cheaper from third-party sellers. But that's a great start. We can finish those two battalions now. We can have one unit standing firing, one unit running forward at the charge. We can also use the spare 10 figures that we get in that box. And we can add them to the 12 that got yeeted out to the units with the two extra commands that we bought. So we can make yet another infantry battalion. Giving us a total of nine battalions altogether. So we've got one battalion made up of elite company guys. I'm using air quotes there. That are charging forward. We've got one battalion of elite company guys who are standing and firing or loading or you know all that kind of stuff. And then we've got seven battalions of line infantry. One of whom doesn't have a command. Although I guess we get the command with the elite company box. So we'll give them that command. And then that means that all of our line battalions have got commands. It's just our two, quote, elite battalions that don't. But that's okay, because our next purchase is going to be... Is there? Does a video go by where I don't recommend you buy this? It's a Victrix box set, and it's Napoleon's Middle Imperial Guard. That's going to be £25, and it's, as I always say, an absolutely phenomenal set. So in that set, you get two sprues of Victrix Old Guard Grenadiers and two sprues of Old Guard Chasseurs. So the difference is the Chasseurs don't have the front plate, whereas the Grenadiers do. Now for the Italians, that front plate was exactly the same as the French, but instead of being brass, it was just a tin colour. It was just like, you know, a steel colour. So that's absolutely fine. Now one of the great things with Victrix and Perry's is their heads are interchangeable. They're slightly different size. Very, very slightly. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. But the Warlord figures, they, their um, collars, their necks, you glue onto the body. That's part of the, the head. Whereas for the Perry's, the collar is part of the body, and you just glue the neck into the collar. So Victrix and Perry, they're interchangeable. Warlord, less so. I mean, you can do it. You just need to do a little bit of work beforehand it's much easier to glue a warlord head onto a peri body than it is a peri onto a warlord because you would need to sculpt the collar then whereas you can just cut it off of the warlord figure but anyway so we've got 60 figures there in their great coats now the commander in great coats now it's going to be a little look a little bit weird because the rest of the unit are in like their dress but the commands in greatcoats, well, you know, whatever. The colonel's got a much more expensive uniform than the men, so he's put his greatcoat on just to keep it clean in the field. I'm sure you can say something like that. Because the two elite units, the two elite battalions, and every time I say elite, I'm doing the air quotes, you can't see them, but I am. Those guys were going to turn into the Italian Guard. Now, the Italian Guard, very much like the French Old Guard, had one battalion of grenadiers, one battalion of chasseurs, and we've got the heads we need from these in that middle guard box. So we're going to bung those on to those peri bodies, and we've got ourselves some chasseurs, maybe the ones charging forward, and we've got ourselves some grenadiers, maybe the ones firing. Now, you could just as easily put them on the great coated middle guard bodies and just say, well, you know, they're just the same as the French whole guard. And that's the problem. They are the same as the French Old Guard. In their dark blue grey coats, they would look exactly the same. The only thing that would be different, as I say, would be the, the brass plate on the front of their bearskin. That seems a bit of a wasted opportunity to me. So I would recommend that you use them in their dress uniform, which is a really nice green and white uniform. It looks really cool. And you save the grey coats for just regular troopers. You can put the middle guard heads that you also get in the set on them and you've got yourself some more troops as well with 60 figures in there that's enough for three more battalions even if we take the command out because you get four lots of command in that set so we can still have two lots of command for the great coat guys and then we can put one each in the elite company battalions that we've made so overall that's a little bit confusing because we are turning 36-man boxes into 24-man units, we're getting a lot more bang for our buck. But we do need to, to plan ahead a little bit just to make sure that we get the absolute most out of those sets. So a quick recap is we've got all together, we've got four boxes of 
mid-war line and we've got one box of the elite companies we've also got a box of victrix middle imperial guard so with those units or sorry with those boxes we've been able to make seven battalions of line infantry from the perries we've been able to make two battalions of elite troops so guard in this case and then we've also been able to make two to three battalions of troops in great coats of which two have got command so that's 12 battalions of troops if we use the third the third great coat battalion without a command now we spend an extra seven pounds fifty again with the perrys on fn 99 line regimental infantry command in great coats now one of the things i like about that is that a couple of them have got their great coats open so we can get those nice italian looking uniforms in there so that's going to be an extra seven pound fifty on top of the 25 pounds that we spent on the victrix box and the 20 pounds on the perry's one remember they are available cheaper from third party sellers so that takes us to 53 pounds for the month because we had that 50p that we overspent on month one so for that i think we've got an absolutely incredible number of infantry really really good brigade well division of infantry there and we've also got some nice tasty guard units as well so we've got our infantry battalions there now we're going to head to the third leg of the stool that makes the polyonic wargaming the bestest period there is out there and that is the cavalry now the italians had three main types of cavalry they i'm sure someone's going to disagree with me here in the comments and they're probably right too but their their main types i'm going to talk about here are the dragoons the chasseurs and the guard d'honneur we're not going to worry about the guard d'honneur today and we're not going to worry about the dragoons i'll come back to those in a second so we're going to head for a unit of chasseur a cheval and again we're going to stick with the perries here we're going to buy a box of those for another 20 pounds there's 14 plastic ones in the box so we're going to add an extra pack of fn40 chasseur a cheval command galloping and that's going to take us up to 17 figures which gives us our two units of eight so that's another 29 pounds which takes us to 82 pounds leaving us 18 pounds and i think the first thing we need to look at with this is getting some higher divisional command we've got uggins of troops now we're going to need some men to lead them we've got the brigade commander that we got in month one from our three colonels we only used two of them in the end now the divisional commanders that the perrys do they all represent specific general de division so you know it doesn't really matter you can repaint them as what you know whatever you want i don't think they look particularly like their historical counterparts now i'm going to recommend fn97 that's imperial guard commanders mounted and that's for the the pure reason that they're extra spangly they are commanders of the guard and because they're at, like we're doing italians i think they should look extra yeah <laughs> a, bit, a bit extra decorated look that 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 extra bit of sartorial elegance that the italians have so that's why i'm going to recommend that you go for the imperial guard commanders but if you'd rather just go for regular divisional commanders that's absolutely fine as well whichever ones you go for that's another nine pounds which takes us to 91 pounds now there's three ways we can go from here and i'll leave it up to you to decide what uh, which one it is you fancy going for so the first way is we could get ourselves some orderlies now that's another pack of mounted guys from the perry so that's going to be nine pounds and what we do with these is we stick them on the bases with our generals and we just it helps them stand out a little bit i think they're super cool i don't think that's really what we should be going for if we're trying to squeeze every penny the second option is we can go for some flags now we do get a lot of flags in the perry boxes but we've got a lot of infantry battalions out there as well so we could probably do with some flags particularly for the guard as well so that's another route we can go down if you're going to go for flags i would recommend that you get guard specific ones and then you can use the ones that you get in the perry boxes for your line battalions because to be honest you're not going to be able to see the differences at that scale anyway so i would just go with those all right if you've got to pay for them anyway so for argument's sake if you were uh, you know oh, i want to get some lozenge flags and no one you know they don't come in the box if you're going to pay for them anyway you may as well get the correct ones 
But if you've got some free ones, but you know it's got a one in the corner instead of a four or whatever, I mean, really, I, I, I honestly don't think it's worth the money. The third route you can go down, and it's the one that I would recommend, is that you get a second piece of artillery. That'll give you either two batteries, or if you want that one battery to consist of two models, it'll give you a slightly beefier battery. We've already got the bases for it. We bought them in month one. So we can go with those, bang them on a base, job done. Whichever route we go with, we've come to our £100 for month two. With the flags, if you pop over to... I'm trying to think of the name off the top of my head. Uh, GMB Design, that's the one. It came to me in a flash of inspiration there. Then you'll be able to get probably two or three sets of flags for that money. And that'll take you up, you know, for £9. That'll take you up to the £100. So, we've spent £200. What have we got for our money? Well, we've got a, quite a large army, I have to say. I'm going to start with the easy stuff. We've got four commanders... Now, you can double them up on base if you want to, but I would suggest that we don't. I suggest that you have two infantry line commanders, that you have one for the guard infantry, and then you've got a divisional commander. So we've got the four commanders there. We've got one or two gun batteries. For me, I'd say it's two batteries or two gun models anyway, which you can either use as one battery or you know two batteries of one gun. For the infantry, now this is the, the confusing me. This is where I normally get them out on the table, but I don't actually have that many Italians, I'm afraid. But we've got seven battalions of infantry that are made out of the Perry plastics. We've got two battalions of guard infantry that are made out of Perry plastics with the Victrix old guard heads, one with the grenadier heads, one with the chasseur heads. And we've got three infantry battalions in great coats. That have got covered shakos, so they'll be the ones that come in the middle guard box. For a total of 12 infantry battalions, we've also got two regiments of Chasseur Acheval. I think that's a really impressive army. I think you're not going to want much more than that. You might want to get some more specialist cavalry. You might want to get some dragoons or maybe some guard d'honneur later on down the road. But I think for £200, that's a really, really impressive army. I'd love to be able to show you a picture of it out on the tabletop. As I say, I don't actually have that many Italians. So you're just going to have to use your imaginations, I'm afraid. But I think that's more than enough to be going along with. And I think that would be a, an impressive army. You know, when it gets out on the tabletop, I think that would look great. So thank you very much for listening. I, I The lack of being able to photograph the figures as we go on has been a bit of a struggle for me in this one. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've not over-egged the pudding. I hope you've managed to, to keep up. I've maybe been a little bit too repetitive. But it, it's a, it's something that I want to talk about a bit more. Is using the... It, it's, it's sort of like a, a Maxi Minis video. It's using the figures designed for French and using them as Italians. As I say, the Perrys, not only do they you know believe that, yeah, it's fine, you can use them as Italians. They actively encourage you to use them as Italians by giving you painting guides in the boxes, and more impressively than that, the flags to go with them. So thank you very much for listening. If you are interested in maybe pick up any of those figures, please check out my affiliate link with the outpost down below. It does help the channel, doesn't cost you any more, and you do get those sweet, sweet discounts as well. I don't think you can buy the, the bundle deal from them. I think you'd have to go direct through to the Perry's for that one. But... If you're just buying the individual boxes like we did at the start of month two, you can definitely grab those from there. Don't forget, tomorrow I am doing a live stream from half past ten, where I continue my May challenge to paint the entire Waterloo box set in one month. So if that's something you can do, if you're off work, then jump in on that. It'll be great to see you. But either way, I'll see you next time.